Hi everyone. Today's video lesson is on a maths concept which teachers often find difficult to explain real time in a traditional whiteboard setting. Thereby, students find it difficult to grasp also. Through this video, I hope to take away that difficulty of both teachers and students. We are going to discuss what is the maximum number of regions that n lines can divide a plane into. As an example, did you know that if we draw five lines, they can form up to 16 regions on a plane? For six lines, the maximum number of regions that can be formed on a plane are 22. In this video, we are going to see how and why this happens. And we are also going to derive a general formula for the maximum number of regions formed in a plane by n lines. This one. So let's start. Now before any line is drawn, initially there is one big region. When we draw the first line, it divides this region into two. Therefore, the first line increases one region in the plane. Let us assume a scenario where every new or we can say every subsequent line intersects all the existing lines at unique intersection points. When we draw the second line, it passes right through these two regions, dividing both into two parts, thereby increasing two more regions in this plane. The total number of regions now is four. When we draw the third line, it passes through these three regions, dividing each into two parts, thereby increasing three more regions in this plane. The total number of regions now is four plus three, seven. Now, when we draw the fourth line and assuming it intersects the previous three lines at unique points, see carefully, the fourth line passes through these four regions, dividing each into two parts, thereby increasing four more regions in this plane. The total number of regions now is 7 plus 4, 11. Are you able to notice a pattern here? Line number K passes through K regions and divides each into two parts, thus increasing K regions. Let us see if this holds true for line number 5 and line number 6. Line number 5, the blue line, intersects all the four previous lines and passes through these five regions. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Thereby, increasing five more regions in the plane. The total number of regions now is 11 plus 5, 16. And finally, line number 6, the pink line, intersects all the five previous lines and passes through these six regions. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and 6 thereby increasing six more regions in the plane. The total number of regions now is 16 plus 6. That would be 22. Here is a visual representation of what we have discussed so far. Line number K intersects each of the earlier K minus 1 lines at a unique point and divides each region it traverses into two parts, thus splitting k-2 regions between the intersection points and two beyond them in both directions. So if it is the sixth line, it will have five intersection points on it and it will pass through six regions shown by these pink arrows. Therefore, we can say that line number k passes through a total of k regions and in the passing, it splits each region into two parts. Thus, line number K forms K new regions on a plane. At this stage, you might wonder what are the other scenarios that are possible and why they will not maximize the number of regions. So, there are two other scenarios which are if line number K is number one, parallel to one or more of earlier lines or number two, 
If line number K intersects earlier lines at one of the intersection points formed previously. Let's take the example of three lines. If the third line is parallel to the other two, these three lines won't intersect at all. And so this pink line will pass through only one region of this plane, splitting it into two parts. Net increase is only one region. In the second possibility, all three lines intersect at the same point. So this third line, the pink line, passes through and splits only two regions. Thus it increases only two regions in our plane. And this was our best case scenario where third line intersects other two at two unique points. And thus it passes through and splits three regions and thus increases three region or regions on a plane. So hope you have understood the region splitting logic well. So let us derive a general formula for the best case scenario. Let us suppose RK is the number of regions formed in a plane by K lines. Since line number K increases K regions in a plane, we can say that RK minus RK minus 1, which is the number of regions at K minus 1 lines before the kth line was drawn. This is equal to K. We already know that R0, the initial number of regions, is equal to 1. R1 minus R0 is also equal to 1 because the first line adds one region to our plane. R2 minus R1 is equal to 2 because the second line adds two regions to our plane. R3 minus R2 is equal to 3 because the third line adds three regions to our plane and so on. Rn minus Rn minus 1 is equal to n because the nth line increases n regions on our plane. Adding all these equations together gives us the maximum number of regions in a plane with n lines. We can see alternate terms cancelling out. So Rn is equal to 1 plus bracketed 1 plus 2 plus 3 up till n. And the sum of first n natural numbers is n into n plus 1 divided by 2. So this equation can also be written as Rn is equal to 1 plus n into n plus 1 divided by 2. The maximum number of regions formed in a plane by n lines is 1 plus n into n plus 1 divided by 2. Finally, let's practice a quick question on this concept. All you need to know is the formula we just discussed. A plane is divided into 67 regions by n lines. If it is known that no two of them are parallel and no three of them have the same intersection point, find n. We know this is our best case scenario. We have just learned that. The maximum number of regions formed in a plane uh, by n lines is equal to 1 plus n into n plus 1 divided by 2. This is given to be 67. So solving this equation, n into n plus 1 by 2 is equal to 66. Multiply this equation with 2 on both sides. We get n into n plus 1 is equal to 132. Now, even though this equation uh, is a quadratic equation, we can solve it by trial and error. Because don't forget, n is a natural number. It stands for the number of lines drawn on a plane, right? Try writing the right hand side as a product of two factors of 132, which are consecutive natural numbers. So we know 132 can be written as 11 into 12. And therefore, comparing both sides of the equation, n is equal to 11. The number of lines on this plane are 11. That completes our topic. Hope you have understood it well. Don't forget to press the like button if you enjoyed this maths lesson and also subscribe our channel to access other such useful content. Happy learning and take care.